Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an ASUS ROG Flow X16, the GV601 edition. I'm going to show you how to get inside and take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you many of the various components you can access once you're inside. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip your computer over to access our bottom case screws. Now you have quite a lot of screws here. There are 13 screws you need to remove. After removing those screws, you're gonna use a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool to go all along the seam and gently pry up the bottom case from the rest of the computer. I say plastic pry tool because that may uh, scratch your computer a lot less than metal will. Uh, we usually use like a very firm guitar pick. Um, if you have that. So you're going to start on one end, usually up here in one of the corners, go around. If you get stuck, leave it, go to the other side, continue in the other direction. Uh, also make sure not to put your pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge, pry that bottom case up. When you get that bottom case up, this is what you'll be looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, there'll be a link below. It'll have all the tools and supplies that I use in my shop. Also in that list, there'll be another link It'll have all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer if you're looking for any help with those. Now your battery is right down here near the bottom of my screen. Uh, the part number for this battery was a C41N2109. This is a 90 watt hour battery, 15.52 volts. I'll list all that information below in the description if you're trying to find your own replacement but I will also have a battery replacement in that link I told you about below with all the replacement parts. In order to get this battery out, you have four screws, two on the bottom, two on the top, and then to unplug it from the motherboard, the cable comes up right here, plugs into the motherboard right here. Now this, this white plug, this is a snap. It snaps onto the, that port. So to get that up, it's, it's not a plug where you pull out. You'll just pull straight up and off of the motherboard and this will come off of that plug. And I guess the last thing to mention about a battery replacement, if you're here because your computer's not turning on, um, your battery could be bad and may need to be replaced, but the issue could be something else that's stopping your computer from turning on. Most laptop computers, even with a dead battery, should still turn on and work correctly with the charger plugged in. So if you're not able to get your computer to turn on, there may be something else that's a problem with it. I will have a video link below in the description. It'll be a tutorial showing you how to troubleshoot a laptop that's not turning on to find the cause of why that's happening. You have two M.2 PCIe X4 slots here. You have this one on the right that many of you will have a solid state drive in stock. And then you have this one here on the left near your Wi-Fi card that many of you will have empty stock. These slots take Gen 4 solid state drives. And the one that you have stocked will generally be around a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. So below in the description, in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I will try to have several different options for solid state drives. I'll try to have uh, a smaller 2230 solid state drive. It's kind of half the size of these large ones uh, for 500 gigabytes. If you're just looking for a very uh, low cost replacement, uh, I will also have a terabyte, a larger 2280 one terabyte drive, and a two terabyte drive if you guys are looking to upgrade. I'll, I'll have all three of those in, in that list. The way that you operate this, there's a screw right here on the right. You undo that screw. You take off this plate with its thermal pad on top, and that will release your solid state drive, and then you can pull it out of this port right here. If you're looking to improve your computer's performance, upgrading your solid state drive and your RAM uh, are great ways to improve your computer's speed. And I guess the last thing to shout out about a, a drive replacement is if you do install a new drive, you most likely have to install an operating system onto that drive. 
Um, below in the description, I will have two video tutorial links. One will show you how to install Windows 10. The other will show you how to install Windows 11. These are your two RAM slots right here. You have two SODIMM slots, DDR5 RAM. This computer takes a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so below in the description, in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I will try to have several different options for you as far as RAM replacement. I will try to have a single light stick if you're just looking for the cheapest replacement if one of yours goes bad. I will also have a 32 gigabyte kit and you need two 16 gigabyte sticks. I'll have a kit uh, for two of those. And then I will have a 64 gigabyte. If you're looking to upgrade, fully max it out, I'll have a kit there with two 32 gigabyte sticks to really max out your RAM. The way you operate RAM, there are two spring-loaded metal arms on either side of the RAM stick. To get the RAM stick out, you would gently pry those apart away from the RAM. The RAM stick will then release. Oftentimes it'll even pop up a little bit so you can take it and slide it out of that port. To get the RAM back into the port, if you notice on your RAM stick, there's a long side and a short side. So you can't put it in upside down. You can only put it in the right way. And then you get it in there and make sure it's nice and flush. The gold section that plugs in to the port, make sure that it's nice and even all the way down. And then when it is, you just press on the center of the RAM right here, press down, and those spring-loaded arms will latch onto it and hold it in place. This is your Wi-Fi card right here. Uh, the Wi-Fi specs will be below in the description if you're looking to find your own replacement. This is a 6E802.11 uh, AX card, but I will try to have a Wi-Fi card replacement below in that link I told you about, that list of all the replacement and upgrade parts. I'll try to have a Wi-Fi card in, in there. Uh, to get it out, you have this piece of black tape that's on top of it. You would need to gently peel that back. There's a single screw right under the tape. You take that screw up and the Wi-Fi card can come out of this port right there. And then the only thing you have left attached to it is this black and white wire, these antenna wire that plug down right on top of here. That's what this tape is protecting. And those aren't plugs, those are snaps. So they just snap directly onto the Wi-Fi card. To get them off, you would just pull straight up and off of that card. To get them back onto the card, they do have to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back on. And you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you push too hard. So just be patient, go slow. It could be frustrating if you're not used to it, but you will be able to snap those back on. And then the antenna wire run to this antenna here. That just sticks on with double-sided tape, and the white wire goes to this antenna here. Again, same thing, double-sided tape. So those are easily peeled off if you need to replace those. I guess the last thing to mention about a Wi-Fi card replacement, if you're having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you can't see the networks, um, it is possible that your Wi-Fi card is bad and needs to be replaced, but it also could be a driver or a system issue, and your card could be fine. So before opening up your computer, trying to replace the actual card, I will have a video link below in the description. That'll be a tutorial showing you how to troubleshoot Wi-Fi not working in a laptop because you may be able to fix it without getting in here and trying a repair like this. You have the right speaker here down near the right of my screen and the left speaker here toward the left of my screen. So these are not held in by screws. These are just rubber washers, these red things over the posts. For sound insulation, you can just wiggle these speakers right up off of those posts to get them out. Uh, they do not connect down here by a wire like in many laptops. They both plug into the motherboard themselves, this one up here and this one up here. So as mentioned before, do not pull on the wires. These speaker wires are even more fragile than the battery wires. Uh, definitely manipulate just the plug. Get your fingernails or, or a pry tool. Pry those out from that motherboard. I will try to have some speaker replacements below in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts. Uh, they can be kind of hard to find for this model for some reason. So I'll try to find them. Um, if they're out of stock, when you guys look, let me know. Um, and I'll try to find some others to put in there. Um, and I guess the last thing I can mention about a speaker replacement, if you're having sound quality issues, I'm not talking about if your speakers are blown, 
um, and they have that junk sound when the bass kicks in, you definitely need to replace them. But if you're having other sound issues where the sound isn't consistent across different software, if you're having trouble managing it, it could be a driver issue or a system issue. It may not be a physical speaker issue. If you want help troubleshooting those things, I will have a video link below in the description. It'll show you how to make sure all your drivers are updated, your systems updated, so you can rule that out before looking at a physical speaker replacement. So you have three different fans here and a pretty large heatsink over your CPU, GPU area. You have the two vents here going into these fans, getting some heat out of the computer, uh, but you also have some heat being blown out of the fans this way. If you notice into the computer, uh, that's funneled to this fan, which then shoots it out of the vent in the bottom case. So quite an intricate fan assembly here. Uh, this fan, as you can see, is held down by two screws. It plugs into the motherboard here. Very fragile wires here. Definitely just pull on that plug. Don't pull on the wire. You could definitely damage that. If you want to take the fan heat sink out, you have quite a few screws. Uh, you get this screw here, this screw here. This fan plugs into the motherboard right there. Same as this one, very fragile. Uh, you have these four screws over this area, these four screws here. Be very careful, if you notice here, this is a warranty void sticker over that screw. This is kind of a side point with a lot of computer repair. You may see these at various points in the computer. Some even have them right on the bottom case. But just be aware that when you disturb that, that sticker, that you're voiding your warranty all or part of your warranty. So just keep that in mind when doing repairs like this. Another thing to shout out, I don't know why you're in here. Maybe you're in here to replace a fan. Maybe you're in here to deal with some overheating issues. But for any reason, if you do remove the heat sink on any laptop and you expose that thermal paste to air, you will need to reapply thermal paste. It, it kind of limits its ability to do its job well. Uh, so I will have a video link below in the description. I'll also have it as the end video when this video is done. It'll be a tutorial video in how to fix an overheating laptop. But what it will do is it will show you how to clean off all the old paste. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. Um, and then it'll show you the right amount of thermal paste to put down. If you put too much thermal paste down, it'll actually lock heat in rather than facilitate its transport out. So I will have that video link if you want help with that. Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm working with an Asus ROG Flow X16. This is gonna be the GV601 series of computers. I'm gonna show you how to open it up, access your fan assembly, heatsink, CPU area. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip your computer over to access our bottom case screws. Now you have quite a lot of screws here. There are 13 screws you need to remove. After removing those screws, you're gonna use a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool to go all along the seam and gently pry up the bottom case from the rest of the computer. I say plastic pry tool because that may uh, scratch your computer a lot less than metal will. Uh, we usually use like a very firm guitar pick. Um, if you have that. So you're going to start on one end, usually up here in one of the corners, go around. If you get stuck, leave it, go to the other side, continue in the other direction. Uh, also make sure not to put your pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge, pry that bottom case up. When you get that bottom case up, this is what you'll be looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, there'll be a link below. It'll have all the tools and supplies that I use in my shop. Also in that list, there'll be another link It'll have all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer if you're looking for any help with those. Now, before I do anything in a computer, I always either remove or at least unplug the battery. Computers are safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through them. Now, your battery is right down here near the bottom of my screen. You have four screws. 
two on the bottom, two on the top. And then to unplug it from the motherboard, the cable comes up right here, plugs into the motherboard right here. Now this, this white plug, this is a snap. It snaps onto the, that port. So to get that up, it's, it's not a plug where you pull out. You'll just pull straight up and off of the motherboard and this will come off of that plug. Okay, so now that the battery has been removed or at least unplugged, we can proceed deeper into the computer. So you have three different fans here and a pretty large heat sink over your CPU, GPU area. You have the two vents here going into these fans, getting some heat out of the computer, uh, but you also have some heat being blown out of the fans this way. If you notice into the computer, uh, that's funneled to this fan, which then shoots it out of the vent in the bottom case. So quite an intricate fan assembly here. Uh, this fan, as you can see, is held down by two screws. It plugs into the motherboard here. Very fragile wires here. Definitely just pull on that plug. Don't pull on the wire. You could definitely damage that. If you want to take the fan heat sink out, you have quite a few screws. Uh, you get this screw here, this screw here. This fan plugs into the motherboard right there. Same as this one, very fragile. Uh, you have these four screws over this area, these four screws here. Be very careful, if you notice here, this is a warranty void sticker over that screw. This is kind of a side point with a lot of computer repair. You may see these at various points in the computer. Some even have them right on the bottom case. But just be aware that when you disturb that, that sticker, that you're voiding your warranty all or part of your warranty. So just keep that in mind when doing repairs like this. Another thing to shout out, I don't know why you're in here. Maybe you're in here to replace a fan. Maybe you're in here to deal with some overheating issues. But for any reason, if you do remove the heat sink on any laptop and you expose that thermal paste to air, you will need to reapply thermal paste. It, it kind of limits its ability to do its job well. Uh, so I will have a video link below in the description. I'll also have it as the end video when this video is done. It'll be a tutorial video in how to fix an overheating laptop. But what it will do is it will show you how to clean off all the old paste. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. Um, and then it'll show you the right amount of thermal paste to put down. If you put too much thermal paste down, it'll actually lock heat in rather than facilitate its transport out. So I will have that video link if you want help with that. Uh, but this video is how to get inside, access your fan, heatsink area. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and share if this helped you out, if you think it can help someone else out. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this, or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions. I do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day. Also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.